I'm Sami. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. This is actually my kitchen in West London. Today we're gonna do maklube or makluba. It's a upside down rice, vegetables and chicken cake. It's a lovely dish to be sharing with others because it actually feeds quite a lot of people. So I eat is a good time to do such a dish. We're gonna do it with the yogurt and cucumber. Makluba or makluba. Makluba and makluba is the same word. It's just people pronunciation is different. Basically a rice cake, but you know, you cook everything in one pot. As a child, I remember just kind of the whole ceremony behind this dish because, you know, you cook it and then you turn it upside down and hoping that, you know, it's gonna hold together. The word makluba, it translates to inverted or upside down. I'm gonna start with the aubergine first of all cook and tail and then we cut them into about half a centimeter slices. Want to use a tea towel. The idea behind it is that you salt them to get as much water from the aubergine so when you fry them they don't spit all over. And watch your fingers while you're cutting it. Sea salt. I like to salt them from both sides. more salt. While we're waiting for the aubergine, I'm gonna sear the chicken, pot on a medium heat, about a tablespoon. And we start with the skin down. Because the pan is small, I'm doing three at a time. And you want to wait until, you know, they get really nice color. If you want the full recipe, it's in the video description. And since Jerusalem, the cookbook, written by me and Yota Mokelengi. It's very important with dish like this to make your own stock. So now you can see the other side has got nicely browned. So now the chicken is done and I'm just gonna lift it out. Leave it here on the side for a minute. Get rid of. Now I'm gonna return the chicken into the pot here with all the lovely bits that we have in the pan. And this is where I'm gonna do the stock. Have a large onion here, and like that. Bay leaves, these are from the garden. You can buy shop of course. Some black pepper corn. I need some water, about a liter. We just bring it to a boil, let it cook for 20 minutes. Now we're gonna start frying the aubergine. As you can see, it's quite a lot of water coming out. I'm gonna just move them to one side. You take the other side and just dry them quite well. And this is the parrot. He's always with me in the kitchen. Uh, as a kid in Jerusalem, I, I used to have a parrot. He just resembled the parrot that I had as a kid. Now we're gonna start frying and you wait for it to heat up slightly. The oil is hot now and I'm gonna start dropping the aubergine pieces in. And it's important that the oil is hot with a high temperature. If you turn it down, the aubergine like a sponge will suck all the oil. And I have here a plate with some kitchen paper that I'm gonna put the cooked uh, pieces of vegetable to drain slightly. The chicken stock is starting to bubble. It's important to remove some of the impurities that float on the surface because you want the clearish stock. And these aubergines are ready now to get out. And you continue with the rest of the aubergine. It's important that you sprinkle them with a slight bit of salt. Okay, now the aubergines are done and you can see they are really nicely brown. And I'm gonna just lift them and join them with these. And the cauliflower, make sure that they are quite large, Loretta, because they're gonna be slow cooking with the rice and the rest, and they tend to break into mush. Okay, with the cauliflower, you don't need to brown it all over. It's enough that it's got kind of these blisters of color. Okay, now the pan uh, slightly cooler. 
and I'm gonna just wipe it with a piece of paper. This is a normal pan. If you're using a non-stick pan, you don't need to do that, but because this is a, a normal pan, I'm just adding a piece of um, baking paper that I cut into a circle. And then I'm gonna brush the sides with a little bit of melted butter. And now it's a matter of layering the dish. I have here tomatoes that I'm gonna slice them. They've been washed already. And if your tomatoes are big enough, you can also do kind of overlapping slightly. And then we go with the aubergine slices. And then the cauliflower. And you can see I'm kind of slightly pressing down to make space also for the chicken and the rice. Now I'm gonna lift the chicken from the stock. These thighs are with the bone on, so I'm just going to pull the bone off. The preparation for, for the Eid is a, a kind of a very much family affair, so the preparation food-wise starts probably a week before the Eid. Relatives uh, gather around and help each other to produce you know, the quantities that they want. You start the first day of the Eid by um, uh, visiting your relatives and loved ones, you will always be welcome with, you know, uh, coffee, tea, uh, sweets, and if it's lunchtime, then you know you would you would sit with them and have lunch together. Gonna strain the uh, stock. Now I have the stock. It's 700 uh, milliliter. The rice been soaking in in water for 20 minutes with a pinch of salt. And now in here, I'm going to add spices and salt. This is baharat, uh, black pepper, cardamom, allspice, coriander seeds, cinnamon. Sometimes, I mean, this is with paprika as well. I'm going to add a teaspoon of that, a teaspoon of allspice, ground allspice, one teaspoon of ground turmeric, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of white pepper. I'm going to need also one teaspoon of fine sea salt. Add the garlic to the stock before you add it to the dish. Make sure that all the rice is under the stock. If you see that it's not, then I would add a little bit of hot water. So I think I'm gonna add a bit of hot water. Bring it to a gentle boil. Just make sure that it doesn't boil variously because it turns everything around and destroys the lovely layers that we made. And once it starts to boil, reduce it to a very, very low heat, cover it and cook it for 30 minutes. Now we're gonna toast um, the pine nuts. I have in the pan here heating up one tablespoon of ghee or you can use butter. Uh, the ghee, um, it's a lot more flavorsome and nutty. While the makluba is cooking, I'm gonna do the cucumber yogurt. I'm gonna start with the cucumber. I'm gonna peel it. I'm gonna cut it in half and then de-seed it because the seeds have quite a bit of water and you don't want that in the yogurt. Here I have a bowl with 500 grams of uh, Greek yogurt. It's important to use thick yogurt because you want the creaminess and not uh, so much the water. Dried mint. Quite a bit, a tablespoon. This is the most important flavor into this. A bit of uh, white pepper, a pinch of cayenne. We're using as well uh, fresh mint, about a kind of one tablespoon, it's thinly shredded. One uh, clove of garlic, salt, a bit of lemon juice. And this yogurt, it's nice to do ahead of time and leave it in the fridge. I'm going to switch off the heat. And this is a very uh, old technique. My grandma used to do it. You need to leave the makluba to steam for about 10 minutes. But you don't want all the water from the lid dripping back into the dish. Quickly lift it, add a tea towel on top and pop the lid back on. And just leave it like this for 10 minutes. It's quite amazing now in, um, in the UK, the kind of hunger for new flavors. When I arrived to the UK in 97, there were hardly, uh, you know, the, I remember I used to go to this little shop in Edgeworth to, to do my 
kind of spices and uh, ingredients that comes from the Middle East. And nowadays, I mean, the fact that you know you can just go down to your waitress and get your zatar and sumac and baharat and all these spices that you know a few years back nobody even heard of. Okay, now it's been resting for a good 10-15 minutes. And it's a kind of moment of truth and wish me luck. I would just want to wait a minute or so. And it does happen sometimes, it doesn't hold its shape, but you know, this is part of, you know, the, the whole charm of this dish. And slowly you just kind of start to lift Don't worry about all these bits that um, uh, were left in the pot. We, we can still use them. Just kind of sprinkle them on top. Last piece. The pie nuts that we um, that I fried earlier as well. For a bit of color, a bit of parsley. It's not in the recipe, but I think it looks really nice. And we're gonna serve it with the cucumber yogurt that we made earlier. final olive oil. And here you have it, uh, makluba or ma'luba with cucumber yogurt. Enjoy, happy eating.